Hold on to your seats, folks. In this spine-chilling video, we're diving deep into the dark side of the film industry. Join me as we uncover six horrifying deaths that occurred during the making of some of your favorite movies. From tragic accidents to unexpected twists of fate, these stories will leave you shocked and speechless. But beware, this video is not for the faint-hearted. Brace yourself for a roller coaster ride through Hollywood's most haunting moments. Harry O'Connor, a name synonymous with skydiving and adrenaline fueled stunts, he carved a legendary career out of his fascination for parachuting from airplanes. From the 90s films The Perfect Storm to Charlie's Angels and Tomorrow Never Dies, O'Connor's credits as a stuntman and aerial coordinator are nothing short of impressive. Driven by an unwavering passion for skydiving, O'Connor transformed his love for the sport into a thriving profession. His daring feats and meticulous coordination left audiences in awe as he seamlessly blended the world of film and extreme sports together. In 2002, our fearless stuntman found himself in the beautiful city of Prague, Czech Republic, for the filming of the action-packed Vin Diesel film. Amongst the many daring stunts he performed, one stood out as particularly demanding. Picture this. O'Connor would strap himself into a parasail and be pulled by a speedboat along the majestic Vltava River. But here's where it gets intense. His mission was to navigate under the iconic Palaki Bridge with mere inches to spare. As if that wasn't enough, he had to gracefully descend onto a submarine while his parachute crashed dramatically against the bridge railing. This heart-pounding feat was no easy task, but O'Connor executed it flawlessly time and time again. His expertise and precision allowed him to capture this jaw-dropping scene with absolute perfection, but he insisted on one more take. Harry O'Connor met a tragic end when his last attempt went awry, resulting in a fatal collision with one of the bridge's stone pillars. At just 45 years old, his life was cut short in a heartbreaking manner. On the fateful morning of February 20, 2014, Tragedy struck on the set of Midnight Rider, a biopic centered around musician Greg Allman. Sarah Jones, a talented 27-year-old camera assistant, found herself in a perilous situation while working on a dream scene on a railroad bridge in rural Georgia. The crew had meticulously set up the main prop, a bed frame and mattress, on the tracks, believing they were safe as they had been assured that only two trains would pass by. However, their assumptions were shattered when an unexpected third train suddenly appeared on the horizon. In the chaotic scramble for safety, Jones and a few others managed to reach the narrow walkway that ran alongside the tracks. Desperately clinging to the girders that towered above it, they sought refuge from the impending danger. Unfortunately, in their haste to escape, they were forced to leave behind a bed that had been left in their path. The consequences of this decision would soon become tragically clear. With a deafening roar, the train barreled towards them at an astonishing speed of around 65 miles per hour. The impact was devastating, sending metal bars hurtling through the air like deadly projectiles. The aftermath was harrowing. Six crew members were left seriously injured. Among them lay Jones, lifeless on the tracks, her body claimed by merciless shards of metal debris. In a shocking turn of events, investigations into the tragic incident on set revealed a web of deception and dishonesty. It was discovered that no one had actually been given permission to use the bridge, despite claims made by the director and producers. The director, Randall Miller, had simply lied to everyone involved. The producers were also found to have been less than forthcoming about the dangers that the crew faced while working on the set. This negligence led to a trial one year later. In an effort to avoid more severe consequences, most of the defendants chose to plead guilty. As a result, they received lighter sentences consisting primarily of fines and probation. However, director Randall Miller faced a more severe punishment as he became the first filmmaker to be jailed for an on-set death. He would ultimately serve one year in jail. This case serves as a stark reminder of the importance of transparency and safety in film production. It also highlights the legal repercussions that can be faced when negligence leads to tragic consequences on set, or that's how it's supposed to work. Ormer Locklear was a legendary figure in the early days of aviation, and his career was nothing short of extraordinary. Born in 1891, Locklear began his journey as a stunt pilot and quickly gained fame for his daredevil aerial acrobatics. 
Locklear's career reached new heights when he joined the film industry as a stuntman and aerial coordinator. He performed death-defying stunts in numerous silent films, capturing the imagination of audiences worldwide. His fearless nature and precision flying skills made him a sought-after talent in Hollywood. Locklear's most notable achievement was his role in the film The Great Air Robbery, 1919, where he performed breathtaking mid-air transfers between moving planes. This groundbreaking feat showcased his unparalleled expertise and solidified his status as an aviation pioneer. Tragically, Locklear's career came to an untimely end when he died at the age of 29 during a night flying accident while filming The Skywayman, 1920. In a tragic turn of events, the last stunt planned for the film's shooting schedule took a devastating turn. Locklear, at just 28 years old, performed a daring tailspin known as a suicide dive. The intention was for searchlights to be turned off during the dive to ensure Locklear's safety. However, for some reason, this crucial step was overlooked. Blinded by the lights or disoriented in some way, Locklear was unable to pull out of the dive and had a horrific crash dying upon impact. In an unexpected move, the movie studio decided to include footage of this fatal crash in the final release of the film. In an interesting turn of events, Jack Budlong, a skilled horseman and close friend of the famous actor Errol Flynn, found himself with a role in Flynn's latest film, They Died With Their Boots On. This biopic focused on the life of George Custer and included a climactic scene recreating the Battle of Little Bighorn. Scheduled to begin filming on June 25, 1941, Budlong made an unusual decision. Instead of using a wooden prop saber like the other extras, he chose to brandish a real saber while riding into the battle scene. The reasons behind his choice remain unknown. In a tragic turn of events, Budlong's quick thinking and presence of mind were not enough to save him from a fatal accident. As his horse spooked and reared, possibly startled by an explosive, Budlong made the split-second decision to toss his saber away before being thrown off. The sword, unfortunately, landed with the blade facing upward, creating a dangerous situation. When Budlong landed on it during the fall, he suffered severe injuries that ultimately proved fatal. Despite being taken to the hospital for treatment, he tragically succumbed to his injuries a few days later. In 1984, Jan-Erik Hexum was a rising star in the entertainment industry with a promising career ahead of him. At just 26 years old, he had already made a name for himself through his roles in popular television series such as Voyagers and Cover Up. However, tragedy struck when a seemingly harmless joke took a devastating turn. Hexum's life was cut short by an accident that occurred on the set of Cover Up. While waiting for filming to resume, he playfully picked up a prop gun loaded with blanks and jokingly pointed it at his head. Unbeknownst to him, the force of firing the blank cartridge at close range caused severe trauma to his skull. This unfortunate incident serves as a reminder of the dangers that can arise from even seemingly innocuous actions. It is a tragic reminder that life can be fragile and unpredictable. Despite his promising talent and undeniable charisma, Hexum's life was tragically cut short on October 18, 1984, by an ill-fated joke gone horribly wrong. On October 21, 2021, things took a devastating turn on the set of the Western film Rust. Actor and producer Alec Baldwin, while rehearsing a scene at a remote ranch in New Mexico, tragically pulled the trigger of what he believed to be an unloaded gun. The result was chaos and tragedy. According to the film's director, Joel Souza, the sound that followed was jarring, like a whip and then a loud pop. In that moment, cinematographer Helena Hutchins collapsed to the floor. Helena Hutchins passed away at the age of 42 during her transfer to the University of New Mexico Hospital in Albuquerque. The following day, Baldwin released a statement expressing his deep shock and sadness over the incident. In the aftermath, on January 19, 2023, David Halls, the first assistant director of the movie Rust, pled guilty to a charge of negligent use of a deadly weapon. As a result, he received a suspended sentence and six months of probation. Then on March 31, 2023, Halls pleaded no contest to another misdemeanor charge related to negligent use of a deadly weapon. This time, he was sentenced to six months of unsupervised probation, along with a $500 fine 
and 24 hours of community service. On August 4th, 2023, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, the armor for the Rust movie, made a significant decision in her ongoing legal case. As the sole remaining criminal defendant in the shooting incident that tragically took the life of Helena Hutchins, Gutierrez-Reed chose to waive her right for a preliminary hearing. This means that she has allowed the trial against her to proceed without further evaluation of the criminal charges she is facing. Uh, the outcome of this trial will ultimately determine Gutierrez-Reed's legal fate in relation to this heartbreaking incident. On April 21st, 2023, the news broke that the Special Prosecutor's Office in New Mexico made a surprising announcement. They revealed that the involuntary manslaughter charges against Baldwin were being dismissed. This unexpected turn of events left many people puzzled and curious about the reasoning behind this decision. It sparked discussions and debates about the intricacies of the legal process and raised questions about accountability and justice. The news quickly spread, capturing headlines and generating public interest in this high-profile case.